So we're here today at the Future T TV Advertising Forum. Uh, there's lots, lots going on with programmatic and addressable and online video moving to TV. What is the future of TV advertising? I think it's, it's an exciting future coming up. Um, we, we are seeing programmatic obviously being one of the key drivers in online video. Um, but we are also seeing some elements of that also moving into TV. Um, as you uh, have seen, uh, Atel Group has invested also in, in some of the technology companies like Spot Exchange, which are marketplaces for online video, mm -hmm. but also into the TV space with Clipped um, and VideoAmp, that are kind of companies that are kind of trying to bring the programmatic and online video experience and the methods of selling actually into TV. What was the rationale with the investments that you've made that you mentioned and um, are you done now or do you see more M&A, more investment? I think it's, it's going to be a, quite a journey to be on, honest. Uh, we want to um, be on top of the uh, developments and actually understand the dynamics of the market. We don't need to own everything and, and have a full kind of ecosystem. That's not the goal. It's really understanding how advertising in future will be sold, can be sold, what benefits can we bring with our content and our audiences to the advertisers. And it's going to be more tech driven, that's for sure. And uh, it just needs to be linked up in a way that is also sort of going to make the message work for the advertisers and make the advertisers sell their products, obviously, in the end. And that's going to happen at scale and also in a much more broader way of um, um, having different products for different advertisers and, uh, and needs. So I guess this, this puts RTL as a broadcaster and <clears throat> producer across more screens than it used to be, like traditionally just the traditional TV. What, what place does mobile have in, in a cross-screen video environment? I think mobile is a, is a huge element um, of how video will be consumed. And I'm really seeing it as a, you have a screen on the wall, yeah, and then you have a lot of other devices on the rest. So mobile can be quite a lot of different things. It can be the very small kind of smartphone mm -hmm. and so on. And I think that the content uh, that is going to be deployed to the, each and the uh, other device will be different. I think that you will have a different viewing experience and that's why also the advertising will have to be a little bit differently kind of added to the content and, and uh, sort of creating more engagement and involvement and not reluctance and non-acceptance of having ad loads in front of your face which would just say, I just wanted to watch a two-minute video and not three minutes of advertising. So we heard from agent, some agency uh, bosses today that they're interested in the cross-screen delivery but also measurements. They really want to understand um, return on investment in a holistic sense, but they don't think we're there yet. Um, what's your read on all of that? I have to smile a little bit about that because I think that um, a lot of the um, uncertainty and confusion is also kind of uh, among the agencies and their clients themselves and they're trying to, let's say, have a con discussion with the publisher on things that we could actually already kind of see as done in terms of what is an ad impression or what is a viewable ad or viewed ad. Because in the end, you know, this is already kind of written down in the IAB kind of uh, um, definitions and we cannot even agree on that if it comes nailing it down to actually, okay, that's accepted as a standard. Because then the discussion starts, when is the ad actually going to start counting? Is it the first seconds after it had been called or when it's actually delivered to the user? So we can't really decide on these things. And that's, I think, a key issue. We talk about a lot of cross-industry collaboration and understanding, but then we also need to act in, on that together and at least take the small common denominators, the, the small things that we have, there's still a lot of other things and take them now as, as kind of already approved and move on. Yeah, I think that's one, one element. But I think more than just <clears throat> understanding like viewable impressions, it seems like they want to understand uh, impact and the consequence of ads across these screens. Uh, video on TV, video on mobile, video on other devices. Mm -hmm. Many agency execs are shooting for like one holy grail metric. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that's a folly or do you think that's uh, where we can go? I think, I think it's absolutely clear that as an industry you will have to make sure, similar as TV has made sure over years, that the, the measurement is accurate. And to be honest, as a, as a consumer for instance, and just being an advertiser, if I go to a petrol pump, you know, I want to make sure that I get a liter of uh, petrol out of that pump and that it's certified that it's been, has been controlled by a third party. 
And what is happening now is that there are many different players trying to insert different metrics, some coming from the agencies, some coming from third parties. And uh, who can you trust, whom can you believe? I think that's a kind of a myth to believe that a third party vendor can tell you that this ad has been verified or uh, viewed or whatever uh, over the long term if the industry doesn't sort of avoid audience measurement and leakage kind of being just a day-to-day -day kind of uh, um, happening. Yeah, even the IAB has said there are just too many vendors out there right now. There needs yeah. to be a shakeout. It's, it's not a shakeout, you know. If there was one solution that you could trust, then you could find a way, yeah? But if it's just, um, you know, trying to uh, sort of tell the advertisers that you've been frauded, you've been taken away uh, ad dollars, of, uh, you've wasted your money, and the same vendor then goes to another, uh, to the publisher and says, well, you have to make sure that the advertiser gets the right reporting. Uh, you know, it's kind of a very biased role. So we have to, and they're making money on this. So we have to be careful on whom we actually give certain data and tools to actually make a business out of that. Because in the end, we're not going to be uh, winning this game by just using island solutions with interest parties that are interested. TV uh, audience measurement has always also been joint industry committees and uh, I think that's something that needs to happen. So there is now this potential <clears throat> with addressable TV for delivering super personalized targeted ads to one individual. Um, TV is an industry that uh, is a mass industry, it reaches millions of people at the same time. By moving to addressable, do, does a broadcaster like RTL risk losing that mass uh, sensibility? I think that's that's still out to be discussed really on, on what is addressable, you know, really going to provoke in terms of are we going to have mass uh, unsold inventory uh, kind of issues or will we have, uh, let's say, hard achievable targets and actually reaching, reaching one specific target group. Mm. I think that's, that's still out to be discussed. I'm, I'm kind of, I think it's going to be an add-on. I think it's not going to be a replacement of uh, what one brand advertiser is seeking, let's say P&G or Unilever. They want to have broad mass uh, kind of communication. And there may be other brands in the automotive industry maybe that want to specifically target one or two uh, sort of specific target groups. But to be honest, we are still about A, B, C, one, whatever kind of target groups across the board. That's what the advertisers are asking for. And that's where addressable can partly help but I think it's more about targeted and uh, sort of specific target group kind of eliminations that you can actually reach for, for actually uh, making sure the data operates. So if you're doing a female skewed product, you obviously may not want to actually reach male just per se. Yeah. So the RTL division Fremantle Media is a producer as well, some big talent shows like X Factor. Mm -hmm. So what is the place <clears throat> for X Factor in, uh, in this new, the new addressable area? Does, does they have a role or will, will those shows still be about delivering mass audience to big advertisers? I think these shows have, uh, um, have, have a great kind of appeal for advertisers still. And they're still one of those monoliths that are kind of up there, these light towers uh, that kind of uh, draw the mass audiences on a Saturday night. But to be honest, in the, on the, on the, on the, uh, in the past, you know, they've also been pioneering things like branded entertainment, branded content. I mean, let's look at the Coca-Cola sort of uh, glass in front of the, the jury or yeah. the, at the American Idol or um, even uh, Ford and, and other big brands being sort of part of, of, of this TV experience. Um, that has been kind of, they were at the forefront and also in social media, you know, communication, a conversation around the show has been never been so st uh, so strong as, as it has been with, uh, with Fremantle's uh, uh, um, shows. Okay. So lastly, how do you think 2016 will be different? I think 2016 will be a kind of a continuation of 2015, as, as boring as it may sound. But I do think that 2014 and 15, that was a kind of a break in terms of realizing how technology will uh, affect the advertising industry. I think there's nobody now who's really seriously trying to make a circumvent this issue and saying that data is important cross between the delivery and also intelligently connected campaigns across screens uh, and, and, and platforms are going to make, uh, make a difference. But we are actually, I think next year, we're going to see the first kind of massive campaigns being trying to, draw, to be drawn over different platforms. Right. Okay, thanks for your time.